Hey, welcome to the Vortex Garage. We're going to give you a quick update on our Lincoln Town car because, well, we've knocked out some work on it since our last video where we did the 8.8 .8 pinion seal. Uh, and uh, there's a few things from that that we kind of left open. Let's show you what we've got going on because we got a few things taken care of. Now, we got some more videos coming on this car, but they're stuck in the editing booth. So I figured I'd grab the little camera and just show you some of the things that we've been doing. Now, one of the things that we didn't have on camera, but we talked about during our pinion seal replacement, was the fact that we were gonna replace the entire brake system on this vehicle, and well, we've done that. So as you can see, we've put new power stop pads, calipers, and rotors on this vehicle. Now, I had power stop pads and rotors up front. I had the original calipers at the time, and uh, well, I put about 65,000 miles on those, and they were actually still in really good condition. I have a few uh, photos I can attach to the video here to show. At the time, PowerStop only made the kit for the front of this vehicle. So I got the kit for the front with their drilled and slotted rotors and I actually really liked them. They felt good, they stopped good. So from a uh, aftermarket replacement standpoint, I felt that they were really good and I enjoyed them. So I went ahead and got a second set, but this time, Due to the age of the vehicle, I went ahead and splurged and got their uh, rebuilt calipers, which are uh, coated red. So that looks nice. Now, while we were in there, we also went ahead and threw on a set of unit bearings. I guess it's kind of hard to see back here, but you can kind of see some of the new metal there. And the nice clean ABS sensor wire. And that's this piece here as well. So we went ahead and set on a, a put a set of front bearings on it because basically under hard braking, I was starting to feel a little bit of a of a vibration. Could have been the rotors, but it also could have been with the mileage, the front bearings. So it was kind of a good chance to go ahead and do them. Now, when it came to getting those bearings out, this side was actually really simple. The other side, it turned out the bearing was a little rusted on the back and it was very difficult to get out of the knuckle. Took a lot of prying and pulling uh, and even using some tricks, uh, which I'll call out another channel, South Main Auto, which I'm sure some of you have seen. Has a lot of good tri tricks for getting bearings out of knuckles and uh, well, we did the same thing for those unit bearings. I've already tossed them out, but I'll show you the picture of them removed and some pictures from the job. Kind of wish now I had filmed it because this one came out so easily. I was like, well, there's really nothing to this. But then on the other side, I ended up having to use a slide hammer uh, and a few other tricks to finally get that one out of there. It was even worse than doing the bearings on the WJs in which we've showed you like the reverse bolt method usually gets you what you need there. That side for some reason on the passenger side, really difficult. This side, really simple. And of course I did this one first and thought, hey, this will be easy. And then it took two hours to get the other side out. So yeah, it was fun. All right, let's come around back because uh, this is where the, the power stop kit is new. They've now got, look, you can tell this car's been sitting. Can you see on the camera the uh, spider webs? <laughs> so um, we'll, we'll tell you why it's been in here for a little while, but uh, it's pretty much ready to come out, which is why we're grabbing this video. Anyway, as you can see, PowerStop now offers the full kit for this vehicle, including the rear rotor. So we've got now the rear uh, drilled and slotted rotor that matches the front. Before we had another aftermarket, I think I had Bosch rotors on it. And uh, well, they didn't really do so good, to be honest with you. They were very rusty and the inside hat also had a lot of rust where the parking brake goes. Now you probably saw in some other things that we've done. I don't think it was on YouTube, but on Instagram, we talked about how we replaced our parking brake shoes. Um, I actually found when I was doing these that one of the springs had popped off and uh, I had to repair that. No big deal, but uh, we've got fresh parking brake hardware, fresh parking brake shoes behind here. So everything's good to go. And same deal, same replacement red calipers. Real easy to install, honestly. Um, no, no major issues on this. Now, before we put on the new calipers, we actually went through and flushed the entire brake system of this vehicle. And I'll show you up top through a cut video, we actually put on a new master cylinder. Now that seems kind of extreme uh, for, for a car. Why do you have to put a new master cylinder on? Well, these cars actually have an issue where sometimes the original master cylinders, the seals will leak ever so slightly and you'll sort of feel the stoplight, you'll feel the pedal, pedal just drift down ever so slightly. And I had felt that occasionally and I decided to go ahead and replace it, that if I was gonna flush all the fluid, put all new stuff on, 
I was gonna go ahead and put a master cylinder on it as well. Pretty simple to do. Again, we didn't do video on it, um, but we did that with a replacement Motorcraft part. So before we put all this fancy new hardware on, I wanted to get all the old brake fluid out. So we flushed the brake fluid with the old calipers, um, made sure that uh, the original master cylinder uh, had a little bit of fluid in it, and then we went ahead and swapped it out. We bench blood the new one, put the new one on with all fresh fluid. The lines already had fresh fluid at that point. And then we did the brakes, we swapped the calipers, put the new calipers on, and then bled those with completely new fluid going through them. The whole idea there, I didn't wanna put brand new calipers on just to put old dirty brake fluid through them, um, which, you know, since we were going ahead and doing everything, it was a good time to flush the brakes. So we've got all new brake fluid, We've got new master cylinder, all new calipers, rotors, and pads. Brake system on this thing's phenomenal. It feels wonderful when you drive it. Uh, the brakes are extremely confidence inspiring. <laughs> so, and part of this, when you get these, you got to break them in. That's always fun to do. And you know, the first few, as it starts to heat up and it starts to bed in, you just feel those brakes biting harder and harder. And just the amount of yeah, getting pushed forward, it gets stronger and stronger. So. Um, these uh, definitely feel great now, and just in daily driving, they're smooth as ever. And uh, hopefully, these last as long as the last ones did. Now, I'm not shilling power stop parts, but uh, I can say that I've put them on a lot of cars, and for aftermarket stuff, I've had a lot of good luck with them. Now, I've used cheap rotors in the past on like WJs. I used to love it. You could buy literally like 10 or $15 rotors for WJs. And my theory was, slap those on, they last for a couple years, and when they warp, you go buy another one for 15 bucks. But uh, obviously these are more expensive, but I can tell you that having this on a commuter vehicle that does tons of stop and go traffic and the kind of stop and go to where you get up to like 60 miles an hour on the highway and then all of a sudden everyone slams their brakes on and you go back to 10 and you do that four or five times. They held up for over 60,000 miles with no warping only toward the end there. And I think it was probably the unit bearings more than anything. It was with really, really hard braking you know, if you're coming off in a deceleration lane, you'd feel a little bit of, of grumbling is the right word I think I would use. So went ahead and put the new unit bearings on the go with that, as we talked about. But uh, like I said, when it comes to power stop, I think if you're not going to use OEM stuff, some of the aftermarket stuff out there is kind of crappy. Um, there is high quality aftermarket stuff, and I think power stops, high end stuff kind of ranks up there. Uh, so whether it's them or EBC or even some of the high end coded stuff, you know, you're going to get better metallurgy out of the rotors. It's going to be a little closer to OEM. And when you buy the, the cheap $15 ones and they say meet OEM specs, I don't buy that. <laughs> I mean, they don't last as long as OEM brakes do. So, but um, I've had good luck with these. So again, you know, they're not paying me to say it and I don't really care if you buy them or don't buy them, but I can share with you my firsthand experience with them has been positive on this car. I've also got a set of them on the Expedition out there. I also used them on the old Mountaineer and that actually a family member has and has put like another 60, 70,000 on that car and the brakes have been fine on it. So again, no complaints from three vehicles with these brakes so far. All right, uh, what else am I gonna do today? I think that was it. Oh yeah, well we did the cooling system so I'm gonna get it up in the air. We'll show you what we did there in a pending video that we have for you. All right, so one more piece that we did. We went ahead and, and did a cooling system service on this because we noticed it started leaking coolant after we did the brake job. And it turned out our radiator had a leak in this bottom corner. Um, we'll show you the radiator on the ground, but I wanted to go ahead and do some maintenance on this and get some fresh new parts in there. So we've got a brand new Motorcraft radiator. And while we were at it, all new Motorcraft hoses. Went ahead and put on See if you can see our serpentine belt, new serpentine belt. We put a new belt tensioner on, new water pump. So that particular job we did film and we're actually working on editing it right now. So we'll be able to show you exactly how to replace pretty much your entire cooling system on your town car from your radiator, hoses, degas bottle, all the way to your water pump. And uh, water pump on these things is actually really reliable. The one we took off was in great shape, but you know, hey, while we're in there, we went ahead and did it just to make sure our cooling system is fully up to snuff. Motorcraft parts, Ford parts all around. We're gonna have that video for you soon, including all the part numbers and tools that you need to do it. So that's kind of all this is, was just a little video to bring you updated with some of the work we've been doing on the town car, a couple videos that we have pending on it 
that we'll have, but also mainly just as a follow-up to our last video with the pinion seal, we had those old ratty brakes on it, and we just wanted to show you. We put some shiny new stuff on. Before we get the tires on this thing and get it back on the road, it was a great time to just throw it up on the lift and point the camera at those so you could see what we had done. So look forward to seeing that cooling system video shortly. We'll have that up for you as soon as possible. And uh, otherwise, drop us a like, a subscribe, because we got a lot more content coming here on Vortex Garage. We'll see you soon.